They will never have a nuclear weapon. Iran will never have — mark it down, mark it down — Iran will never have a nuclear weapon. When the United States entered into the Iran deal, it was clear that the United States would always have the right to restore the U.N. sanctions that will prevent Iran from developing a nuclear weapon. Let's bring in our next guest. Hamid Reza Golamzadeh is a foreign policy analyst, and he joins us now from Tehran. Hamid Zadeh, okay, so it's not just Iran, but also uh, many other countries categorizing uh, the U.S.'s attempt to extend an arms embargo at the Security Council, which ended in defeat as embarrassing. I get that. But Iran has to be getting the picture that the U.S. isn't really concerned about image or embarrassment, but rather doing everything it can to further its agenda and to get, in this case, all international sanctions that had been eased under that deal. You know, the problem is that uh, President Trump is trying to do anything at any cost just to achieve something ahead of the elections that we are going to have in November. Uh, he is uh, just uh, doing anything he can at his power. Uh, either logical or illogical, rational or irrational, legal or illegal, just to achieve something to resort to it so that can you know, win the election and the re-election re in, in November. That's the point. Uh, he is now resorting to, uh, to uh, bullying other countries to actually uh, violate UN Security Council's resolution by the UN Security Council, another resolution. So uh, what he is doing is a just a rational game, it, it, something politically incorrect uh, to uh, actually put pressure on Iran. He expected by, uh, by uh, withdrawing from the uh, JCPOA, he expected that the maximum pressure campaign would bring Iran to its knees, and then he will achieve something totally different from what President Obama once achieved. Uh, so, but after two years, he failed, and the maximum pressure campaign has failed, and we had Brian Hook uh, leaving the uh, position, and now they are try trying to use something that everyone is against. That so, the, it says that the uh, 2231 resolution says that only JCPOA participants can uh, trigger the snapback mechanism. And uh, we know, interestingly, that okay. the executive order that President Trump signed exactly mentions that it is ending the participation of the United States in the JCPOA. So he, he has, and the United I, States has how many, no how many is up? Yes. I, I understand that argument, and, and thank you for, for giving me Iran's stance once again. But um, let's see what happens uh, with the U.S.'s latest motion at the United Nations. But I'm wondering... What steps could we see Iran take in retaliation, A, if this passes at the U.N. Security Council, or B, if the U.S. exercises this snapback mechanism uh, and takes further actions? It's very easy for Iran. It's a simple, actually, equation. Uh, Iran has uh, waited more than two years after the United States actually tried to kill the JCPOA. Iran did all the commitments. Several times the IAEA and the UN Secretary, Secretary General have uh, confirmed that Iran has fulfilled all the commitments. And after that, it received nothing from the JCPOA. So uh, if even the United Nations and the United Nations Security Council are supposed to be something easily being ignored and being violated, so there is no reason uh, for Iran to stay in the deal and stay and rely on um, for example, IAEA or other UN uh, bodies. So the, the first thing, the, the most immediate thing that Iran is going to do if uh, the sanctions, the armed uh, embargo is going to be extended or the snapback is triggered, uh, would be that Iran would actually resort back to, the, to resuming everything that it was doing before the JCPOA, and it's something, a motion that is going on right now in the parliament here in Tehran, and uh, then there would be some, some uh, talks of uh, uh, actually getting out of the, uh, even IAEA, not only just the uh, protocols and okay. the additional protocols and such things, right. but also the IAEA if necessary. Okay. Foreign policy analyst, Hamid Nurezagul thank you very much for joining us here on TRT World. I do appreciate your analysis.